Hello everyone, this is Nifty255, and welcome back to my modding tutorial series for Kerbal Space Program version 1.1, Volume 1, Custom Parts, Episode 1, Part Modeling, Texturing, and Animation. In today's episode, we will cover the basics of modeling, texturing, and animation processes and requirements used to create custom parts for KSP. Before beginning, remember that this tutorial is not designed to teach 3D modeling, only the specific steps required to create a part for KSP. So be sure that you're equipped with the knowledge and software required for 3D graphics and modeling. With that said, let's get into it. Before creating a part, you must decide its purpose. Is it going to be a new engine? A fuel tank? A new science experiment? Also, how will it attach to rockets? Will it be stack attached like engines and fuel tanks? Or will it be surface mounted like solar panels and science experiments? If you choose something that stack attaches, there will be a few rules to follow. Firstly, there are specific sizes of stackable parts, ranging from size 0 all the way up to size 3. Size 0 parts are for probes, size 1 for small rockets, size 2 for larger rockets, and size 3 for super heavy rockets. And although you can create any size part you wish, it's generally a good idea to start with a predetermined size for your first part. I'll be creating a size 2 part for this tutorial. Secondly, you'll need to determine how tall you want to make your part. Just like width, there are predetermined sizes, but you can also use whatever height you wish. The sizes range from quarter size to double size. The last thing to note is the scaling difference between Blender and KSP. For each one unit of width in Blender, your part will be 1.25 units wide in KSP. This means a size 2 part such as mine will be 2 units wide in Blender and 2.5 units wide in KSP. As a quick side note, if you choose to create a surface mounted part, it's a good idea to create a few placeholder cylinders of various sizes so you can see how your part looks when attached. Now that you've determined the type and size of your part, you can begin modeling. A quick guideline to follow with cylindrical parts is to use 12 sides for size 1 and below parts and 24 sides for size 2 and above. This helps lower polygon count in the game and keeps things running smoothly. Once you've created the mesh used to display your model, You'll need to create a second mesh to act as a collider, which will occupy the same space as your display mesh. Typically, this mesh will have an even lower polygon count. For cylindrical parts, it is best to always use only 12 sides for your collider. Here is my part mesh and my collision mesh. While you're working on your part, it is absolutely fine to move your collision mesh out of the way. Simply remember to always move it back before exporting from your modeling software. Next up, let's texture our part. Texturing a model is the process of applying a 2D image to a 3D model in order to give it color. This is done through the process of UV unwrapping, in which a model is taken apart using certain marked edges called seams and laid flat as if it were an image. Here is a simple example of UV unwrapping. Unwrap your model as I have unwrapped mine. Here's how my model looks unwrapped. A cool feature of Blender that has proven very useful to me is the ability to export outlines of your UV maps to images for use as guides when you create your texture. Here's my outline overlaid onto my texture in Photoshop. Remember to hide the overlay when saving your texture, or the overlay will be saved with it. Now that your model has been unwrapped and your texture created, we can move on to applying it to the model. While applying the texture, remember to configure it as a UV map. Open the Mapping section and change the coordinates dropdown to UV. Next, clip the Map dropdown and select UV Map. Leave the Projection dropdown as it is. At this point, your texture is now applied. If you wish, you can preview your model either by pressing F12 or by opening the Render menu in the top left and clicking Render Image. Be sure that, if you decide to preview, you move your collision mesh out of the way and back again before exporting. The final step in creating a part in Blender, though it is entirely optional, is animation. Before creating any animation whatsoever, it is very important to note that, while it is possible to create multiple animations for use in KSP, the file format we will be exporting our model to only supports one single animation clip, so we will have to use a workaround, in which we will create all of our animations in a single clip, and use Unity to separate them later. We'll cover the process of separating them in the next episode, so for now, let's create the animations. My part has two animations, a door opening animation and a door closing animation. As you can see, both are in the same clip. 
congratulations! Your part is ready for the export and import process. Be sure to place your collider back where your display mesh is and save. This concludes today's episode, and as always, thank you for watching. If you would like to keep track of when episodes are released, simply hit that subscribe button. Also, hit that like or dislike button to tell me what you think, and if you have any questions or feedback, just leave a comment. In the next episode, we'll begin exporting our process and preparing it for use in KSP using the Unity game engine. But until then, this has been Nifty255.